speaker box loud Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound My name is Alexi, but I'm also known as Euphoria And I'm a digital artist from Montreal, Canada And I specialize like in creating those surreal characters and landscapes That evoke a very unique feeling and attitude my number one favorite project is definitely all the work I did for Odessa. Um, Odessa is an electronic music duo from Seattle and I was listening to Odessa all the time. It was kind of like my favorite music. To think that now I had a chance to work with them, it's kind of like a full circle moment for me. And being able to see my work at one of their shows uh, just, was just magical. And I remember like when the show starts, the first thing you see on the screen is my character. I remember when I first saw it, like, appear on stage, I started like bawling, I was crying my life out because I was so um, overwhelmed and proud and I just didn't see a, a, a damn thing, I didn't see much of the visuals because I, my, my, my eyes were full of tears. I was like, that's me, that's my work. It was just crazy, I still have like goosebumps thinking about this moment right now, so yeah, it was awesome. When I create a piece, there are a lot of things that I need to consider. Um, first, like. What will be my color palette? What kind of lighting I'll use for my character? What kind of composition I want to create for my piece? I'll just start playing around. I swear to God, I'll toggle between like 50 different color palettes. Give myself room to experiment. My work for me is truly like an escape for myself. It's always been. I remember when I was like overwhelmed with stuff, what brought me solace and peace was just like sitting on my computer and create art for no reason, but for myself. So this is my workspace, and I have a bunch of gear here, but it's pretty simple, I would say. I have two monitors, I have a computer. It has two 3090 graphics card, so it's pretty beefy. I have 128 gigabytes of RAM, because sometimes Cinema 4D likes to eat through your RAM. So it's important to have as much as you can afford. My motion capture suit, I love it. It's so cool because essentially I can use it to make more lifelike animations. So I'll wear it on myself, connect it to the computer, and I'll just animate with my body. So instead of spending like hours keyframing manually, I can do it with a suit and it looks more lifelike. It's just fun, it's a lot of fun. So I'm very thankful to Rococo because they gave me this wonderful piece of gear. In terms of software, I use a bunch of stuff. Um, my main software is Cinema 4D. That's where I'll set up cameras and lighting. And along with Cinema 4D, I use Octane Render. So it's a render engine. I use ZBrush, which is a very well-known tool to sculpt digitally. So I will use that to create my masks. I even used it to like create this ring with a buddy of mine as a collaboration. For me, this software is one of the software that I use the most. And then I have Daz Studio. It's a free software. That's what you can use to create characters. So you start with like a base figure and then you can apply a bunch of morphs on it to customize it, make it your own. After that, I use Substance Painter. It's, a, it's kind of like a Photoshop for 3D where you can use it to um, paint over 3D models. So, Everything that has like a very uh, detailed and um, rich texture will be done in Substance Painter. Uh, if I do a still image, it will be done in Photoshop. I'll do some post-prod on it. And if it's an animation, I'll do it in After Effects usually. And, uh, and the last piece of software that I use frequently is called Marvelous Designer. So it's a software that you can use to do cloth simulation. And that's a very um, hard process. It's a lot of trial and error because sometimes, I don't know, you'll let a simulation run for 15 minutes and in the last 30 frames, somehow a hand is poking through the pants and you have to restart all over. So it takes a lot of patience, but it's so useful to have such tools in my arsenal. So as far as my process, like my artistic process goes, Usually it always, well, most of the time it starts with a sketch. I personally prefer to start with a pen and paper. Um, I sketch like roughly what I want to create. Like it's just to set like the elements that will be in the scene and the composition. That's very important. After that, when I'm done, I'll usually start like if it's a character, I'll focus on the character itself and I'll start posing it. Then like take on all the extra parts 
that are onto my character. So I'll go in and ZBrush and start sculpting. So I'll start from a sphere and I'll just model my way through and make the shape and then add some details and spend hours and hours on them. Um, and once that's done, I'll do all the texture work on those models. Once that's done, bring all of that stuff in Cinema 4D where I, I, I set up the lighting, the composition with the camera, all the shaders, I'll do my render and export that, bring it into Photoshop or After Effects, and then I do a lot of color correction. It really starts from nothing and then I end up with a final piece, maybe an animation or just a still. If you express yourself through art, you could call yourself an artist. There's no art police that's gonna come knock at your door and arrest you, right? What maybe rubs me the wrong way is how people kind of expect artists like me and others to become content creators. When people call our work content, which is it's not, it's not content, it's art. That's all this is. And so for me, it's kind of like a hard inner battle. Like, do, do I want to like work along with the algorithm gods and become a content creator and then get massive reach because I do all of this behind the scenes stuff about my work and I do all, I follow all the trends and all that, or do I just stay an artist and share art for the sake of sharing art? That's a really tough, like, it's hard to choose a side. I guess there's a, a perfect balance, but I haven't found it yet. A, an interesting challenge for digital artists like me is the rapid growth of technology. I hope, I mean, I hope that we, we as humans will still be able to differentiate, like, um, art that has been created by a human versus art that has been created by a machine. I, I think something that's very important, potentially different from AI for me is the process behind a piece. The process is very long, like I'll, I could spend like two full days just sculpting a mask in ZBrush and not leave my computer for two days. And I don't know, but for me, like the feeling of reward when I'm done, when I feel like the piece is finished, that feeling of accomplishment is massive, at least for me as an artist, and maybe some will relate. And when I was using like um, just mid-journey and just prompting stuff, it felt like just a quick dopamine hit. It, just, it kind of felt like the TikTok of creating art versus maybe like the YouTube and the hour-long documentary way of making art. After years of hard work, where my work really had the time to mature and stand out and um, I forged myself in an identity, that's when the good stuff happened. And I think it just happened because I was more ready for it.